Welcome to No Compromise Radio Ministry. Today I'd like to continue my email cleanup. Email number one from Scott. Dr. Chauncey Crandall seems to be getting some attention after claiming to raise after claiming to raise a patient from the dead. His new book, Raising the Dead, is out. I have a co-worker who has bought into the claims. I don't believe his story lines up with scripture. Could you please do a show soon to discuss his book? Thanks. Scott. Well, Scott, I don't really want to buy his book, and so sorry I'm not going to get into this very much, but I will say this. When someone writes a book and says uh, how they went to heaven and came back, uh, how they went to hell and back, how they went to heaven for 90 minutes, how they went to hell for 90 seconds, uh, 40 days they went to hell, 60 days of purpose in heaven, whatever they do when it comes to heaven and hell, uh, I, I don't trust those books. I don't trust the writers. I don't trust the publishers. My guess, this book is published by some two-bit publisher or self-publisher. I guess not every self-published book is horrible. That's not what I'm saying. But you're not going to get Crossway to publish these kind of books because they know better. Not going to get, uh, well, maybe there's some other publishers that would. But there's, there are publishers that have to screen this stuff. Now, I don't know where 90 Minutes and who published that, 90 Minutes in Heaven. I'm, I'm sure they're richer than they were before. But remember uh, what my old pastor used to say. The operative word in near-death <laughs> experience is near. <laughs> oh, I went, I, got, I was, you know, dead and I went someplace. Uh, I got raptured up to heaven. I want to tell you about it. Listen to what Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul actually did go somewhere. These guys, we don't know if it's, you know, they ate too many refried fried beans at night or maybe they took a Vicodin before they went to bed or watched some kind of scary movie. Paul said, though, in 2 Corinthians 12, boasting is necessary, though it's not profitable, but I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. Not your gizzard because you had too many refried beans at night. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago whether in the body, I do not know. Or out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a man was caught up, raptured to the third heaven. Now, of course, we have different heavens. We have the heaven where the birds fly. That would be considered heaven in scriptural language. There's the heaven where the stars are and the moon and the sun. That's a second heaven. And the third heaven is where God dwells. I know how such a man, whether in the body are apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words. So first of all, they're inexpressible. So how are you going to express them in a book? Well, I know why you're going to do that. It's because A, you're a loon, or B, you'd like to make money. Which a man, these inexpressible words, which a man is not permitted to speak unless you're trying to sell money on the concert tour or the Benny Hinn tour. On behalf of such a man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast except in regard to my weaknesses. For if I do wish to boast, I will not be foolish, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from this so that no one will credit me with more than he sees in me or hears from me. And then interestingly, Scott, Paul was given a thorn in the flesh. These people get big payoffs. Paul gets a thorn in the flesh because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations for this reason. So if you really did go to heaven or hell or purgatory or, or um, I don't know, Madagascar or someplace, uh, you are going to get clamped. You are going to get shut down. It's going to be so wild. Uh, here's what Paul got, that he got a thorn in the flesh, was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Now, whether it's an eye problem or something else, I think most of the time when messenger is used in the Bible, it's used of a person. I think 87 out of 88 times, not including this one. So I take this as a messenger too. So here's some guy that uh, Paul is having to deal with his, his ministry. And he was given this messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I implored the Lord, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. 
And then something we rarely do as Christians. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So there's quite a few factors here. We're talking on No Compromise Radio about Chauncey Crandall, about a book, Raising the Dead. And so I have lots of different things to say, even though I haven't read the book. And one thing I'll say is, when we base Scripture on experience, or when we base truth on experience, we're in trouble. Now you say, well, he's not saying, Chauncey's not saying that he went to heaven, came back and talked about it. He didn't say he went to hell and he's coming back and talked about it. He's raising people from the dead. And so you've got a group of people who will say, uh, you know, that Jesus promised that the followers of Christ would do greater the miracles than he would do. And therefore, if Jesus raised the dead and Peter raised the dead, uh, then we should also raise the dead. And so I think people forget Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, where these apostles were given great signs to authenticate both themselves and their message. I think they forget 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, that basically says the same thing. I think they're forgetting Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, that talks about these miracles and signs and confirmation in the past tense. Why do I need to raise people from the dead? Why would I want to do that? Well, if I could do it, what I say would be very, very, uh, would be received very well. They'd say, yes, he knows what he's talking about. But I don't need to do that now. Whether I can raise people from the dead or whether I cannot raise people from the dead, if I tell you the Bible says... My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. I need no other authority. I need no other argument. Uh, And so, raising the dead, I don't know why he wants to write such a book. I don't know anything about the scientific validations. I heard the other day, somebody said uh, that they have seen 500,000. It was Eric Ludy. He said, I've seen 500,000. There are 500,000 documented cases of healing. Oh. I don't know what your view of healing is, but I'd like to see people raised from the dead. I'd like to see apostolic healing. I want to see legs lengthened, cavities turned to gold, bad backs, throw away the chair, throw a wheelchair, throw away the crutch. I'd like to see instantaneous, organic, complete healings like Jesus did in the apostles. So... I haven't really been bogged down to it too much. If the Bible's not enough, nothing's enough. And so you need to go to these kind of books to get your shot. And so stick close to the Bible. Scott, I think your spider senses are correct.